just doing uh, Heresy Hump Day today. A little bit of an abbreviated one. I'm coming in a little late with my Heresy Hump Day this week. We, as uh, many of you know, it's holiday week this week. Easter's coming up. And uh, just with work and the holidays coming up, um, I'm not able to do a full format show today with uh, sort of the more esoteric topics. Um, what I have, just as a note for, from a programming perspective, I've never been consistent in the sense of doing it every single week, Heresy Hump Days. And I have managed most of the time to do it every other week and, and sh shot for that. And now that um, I am doing the Musty Wargamers show with Rusty over at Healthbrex, I am going to try to do Heresy Hump Days opposite of the Musty Wargamers. So there is sort of a semi-live or live show um, with discussion every week. And just that one time it'll be me participating in with Musty Wargamers, and then one time it'll be um, the normal Heresy Hump Days. And so uh, this week, because I was not able to talk about my Saga game last week and, and how it went, I wanted this week to do a table update uh, for, most, for the Heresy Hump Day, as well as I wanted to talk a little bit about Saga and Mordheim, um, which are games that I've played recently. So the new second edition of Saga and the more time. Just kind of give my impressions on both and just sort of plans for both. And uh, today there's not going to be a sponsor because I'm actually doing my Heresy Hump Day the day of before I go into work. And typically with Heresy Hump Days, I do them as an evening thing, Monday, Tuesday, the, the, the day before, and I have a nightcap. But... Um, maybe as a surprise to many. Um, I am not always with a drink in hand. It's typically just for things like an end of the day nightcap or a heresy hump day or something like that. And so um, I don't even have coffee. I'm already coffeeed up for this. And uh, yeah, so I think um, before I go into, and I'll start with Saga, I'm just gonna do the table update. So here we go. Hey everybody, so um, just thought I'd do a little bit of the uh showing off of the animals that I did. These took me quite a while. I kind of took my time with these because I was doing lots of other projects in tandem. But um, these are the Saga Livestock. And I'm, I am happy with the way these came out. Um, they were pretty easy to paint. Um, the way that I ended up deciding, I did most of them the same as far as the bases. They kind of match my Saga stuff. But I did do, like I mentioned, I kind of went over and I redid the pigs. And um, I did them sort of with a combination of um, browns and greens as well as I put some water effects down just to create that shininess that might happen where you have some moisture in the brown like for some mud at times um, and so yeah I kept it kind of glossy looking with some water effects on the ground for them um, really happy with the way the pigs came out actually and then um, the last ones that I did finish were the horses. And so I have this guy here. And they're, of course, not horses. They're riding ponies. I'll always call them horses first and then have to correct myself. Um, yeah, I'm kind of happy with the way these two came out. One of them is carrying baggage and the other isn't. Then my most anticipated animal from this set, and then one of the reasons why I got it is so I could have, sorry about that, sheep. And so those are how my sheep came out. And that's of course a cattle in the corner there, calf. And I've got my cattle. Finished on the base. I've kind of shown most of these already. I've got my dogs there. And that's pretty much it. So yeah, these will really be great for the scenics for Saga. I'll just pan... Oh, actually I left a guy out. Some of you may have noticed that. When I set my table up here, I actually have uh, my larger cattle that I left out there. But... Um, I'm going to pan the table. I'm just going to show 
some stuff that I'm going to be working on as far as miniatures uh, just next. So next up, I have a little project that I'm, you know, as far as number of miniatures that I'm going to be doing. I want to get my Double Trouble Encounters for Savage Core finished. And so, um, for those of you that don't know, in Savage Core, the game, they do have these random events that can happen, sometimes more frequently than others, depending on the scenario, where you can have various things wander into the gameplay. And so it can be like a T-Rex, it can be like a mammoth, like in the game that... Um, we did the test game, playing with the rules, but then these are also other ones, and so um, I have this one here, which is a um, an explorer, and so it's a nice miniature. Um, it's not cleaned up yet. Uh, there's a little bit of clipping I need to do, but not much. And so she could wander in. She's got her backpack and pistol. And there are rules around her, sort of wandering in the game. We have, um, as well, sort of like a German officer holding like a, a mysterious object, like a ball. Like it could be like a crystal ball or some sort of cosmic object. He's got that... Um, Eyeglass, like on the one side, the one, <laughs> the one eyepiece. I love it. <laughs> um, then I have two in this pack. She's sort of like uh, I read the rules, and basically, she's sort of like someone that can actually like wander in and take over your warband and end up becoming your leader. <laughs> Because <laughs> she's sort of like, uh, I don't know, can cause chaos. And your troops can all of a sudden start following her instead of your leader. Um, and then also, there's this guy who's kind of like a Tarzan type. So I am looking forward to painting these ones up. Now, Lucidai did actually send me um, this next one here. I did get this from Lucidai. Um, and so I'll be painting this up as well. And This one is for a new game that's yet to have come out that I'm, I am interested in. I love the miniature and I love the setting. And that's kind of why I really, um, personally, I really like Lucid Eye for the pulp kind of stuff that they do. Um, they, they're getting into a lot of stuff, and um, as you guys know, I play a lot of games. There's just so many games that I actually will play. But um, because this one, like Savage Core, is very pulpy in my mind, and the, the, this is called The Cosmic Vault. Treasures from the Cosmic Vault will be the game. Um, that it's that and it's reminds me of sort of pulp sci-fi um, now Savage Core has a sci-fi element I mean there's actually um, the id which is uh, the aliens that you know can be found in the game and, and bring that science sci-fi component to Savage Core to, to a degree but this one is like set in the cosmic sort of realm and I like that sort of um, Flash Gordon kind of old sci-fi feel and so I don't think it's going to be as big of a game as Savage Core as far as the number of factions and units and things I think it's going to be more individual models and stuff and so um, yeah I am very interested in this one when it comes out now um, this is sort of the figure and I just love the the way it looks I have a lot of ideas as to how I want to um, paint this one up and you know he's got um, a sword, sort of like a saber, that will be on this hand. I have to attach that, but it's you know he's got a saber, and then um, he's got a cape that I'm not showing here. That would be put on, and I, I haven't tested how to assemble this yet, but how best this goes around, I have to look. Oh, actually, it kind of fits in there really nicely. I didn't even expect that. Just sort of slides on there. 
so it'll be like that, which is really nice. And actually, um, it comes with a texture base, which is a little bit of a departure from the Savage Core stuff. And so he's actually on a, a base that's already textured, which I think is very cool. It's really nice. So, um, yeah, so I'm actually really looking forward to painting this one up as well. All right, so back to the chat. Okay, so um, I had a chance to play a game last Thursday with Saga, and I played my Anglo Danes versus the Irish. I'm not really going to do like a recap or the, of a battle report or anything like that, but it it took a little bit longer than it typically would for Saga because we were going through the rules and just trying to really do it as a learning game. And so it was interesting, like although we did some things, I wouldn't say we did a lot wrong. I would say that we didn't take advantage of thing, some things that you can do now with fatigue, having only read the rules once and just still being used to the older game. But um you know, I have the, the rule book here, and I kind of just brought it out just to sort of for talking points on um, the game and just how it went. Movement is a, I guess I should start by just saying that with the orders phase and the activation phase where it shows in the beginning of the book, I mean, Saga dice are a lot easier to get now to, to land abilities and it's less costly to retain them on the board, you know, keeping your dice. And so I think if you found in, in the first version of the game that sometimes you just had turns where you really couldn't get abilities off and it was just kind of frustrating, like you had all these things you could do, but you really can't get the dice to do them. And then also, even though Warlords now only give you one die when you start the, the game, and Saga dice, for those of you that don't play, they're kind of like strategic dice that you put on the board. Um, I found that um, now that levies provide them and now that you can keep the dice from the last round that you left on the board and you can still use them without a penalty, I found that you, you have more access to them, which for, for folks that want to be able to, it works both ways. Your enemy has more access to, to their dice too. Just means that both of you are playing abilities more often in my mind, which I think is good because that's a big part of Saga. Um, and movement i i do like i think it's a bit crisper now in the sense that um you have to be pretty careful and strategic and appropriate with the way you place your first man in a move and then everything else just needs to have like a follow rules for unit cohesion around that guy afterwards and so the the effort that you put now in the second edition to movement in some ways replaces the effort from the first edition in combat where you had to make sure everybody was within very short of a, a man to, to strike. Now they've, they've made combat a bit easier in that once you've done your movement, you've done everything appropriately, everyone can fight. Like everyone within a unit that's touching can fight now. Um, it just assumes that, you know, guys are moving around and fighting. They're all close together. Um, they're all fighting. There isn't just somebody at that moment snapshot, you know, that's not part of the battle. Um, I kind of like that better. I can see it, people like taking both sides of the equation because basically you could argue that at that moment in time, somebody can't strike if they're out of distance. But reality is a whole round of combat is meant to be like both sides clashing. And to think that all that can happen and that somebody that just happens to be behind you can't take quick part because of where they are, it just... I kind of like the new rules better, to be honest. I used to enjoy applying the rule in the old game because it just, some games, I don't know if you guys, um, it may, maybe, this may be like an old Warhammer fantasy principle, but some games have like a complicated nature that once you, you take, you make the effort and you learn the system, you almost take pride in being able to know the rules. And some people may call those people rules lawyers, but there's a, a tendency to take pride in knowing a game and knowing and being able to apply the rules. And, um, many people sort of just discard that notion and just want to play a simple game where it's not difficult to entry level for knowing the rules, just be able to play it. But there are certain things about the first version of Saga I liked, you know, and I liked being able to knowing that portion with the combat and just how it worked and applying it and feeling successful with that. But to be honest, I kind of like the second one better where you just, it's easier for me to apply one time the movement rules and placing that and keeping your cohesion and then combat's easy than actually having 
a looser based system of movement maybe with the movement and then having more um, detail and like in the first edition with the combat. That's the way I kind of see it. I don't know if other folks that play Saga feel differently, but that's the way I kind of saw it. And so I, I did like that. And the new sticks that I used that instead of just using the long measuring stick, but the short ones I showed in the other video were really helpful for the movement just to make sure that folks that were in the right cohesion with the unit leader and with each other within the group. Um, now they, there is charging now, which didn't exist in the first edition. Although having said that, the charging rules were mostly in my mind incorporated in the movement rules in the last edition. It's just now they, they've broken it out and they call it something. Um, th there are some definite you know differences and like they use the charging mechanic and now with certain units, like it'll say like if a unit's charging, this happens you know in some situations. And so it's changed the game a little bit. It gives them more opportunity, I find. Um, I find that um, I didn't. I don't really have a whole lot to say with shooting. Like I don't think it's that different in my mind. I didn't notice it at least in the game. Um, I found that the actual combat in melee, which is like the meat of Saga, I like it better now. Before there were there was a, a distinct order you go through, and in that order, some of the distinct differences that I recall were um, where a fatigue in using your, your and your opponent's fatigue um, is applied at a very distinct spot within the order of combat. Now, fatigue and special abilities or your saga abilities that you apply in the melee combat are done equally at the same time. And so it changes the strategy a bit. And now there's this back and forth you go through before there was a back and forth, but it happened in order. Um, and it, it wasn't as much a back and forth with abilities. It was sort of like, this is when you apply your stuff. This is when your opponent applies their stuff. This is when you apply your fatigue, their fatigue, your abilities, their abilities. Now it starts. And although it may start with the attacker, then it just goes back and forth. And it's like, you can choose to start with using opponent's fatigue and end with you know, having abilities done and end with the fatigue. And there were some situations that came up where there were abilities that affect fatigue and by actually choosing to first use a fatigue of your opponents and then letting them go and then applying an ability later that affects the fatigue it was very strategic like there was one point where i was able to use an ability because i actually manipulated fatigue first and it was the the order in doing that there's much more freedom in that but then also it allows much more strategy in my mind than before in the actual combat realm. And so that I actually like, because it's sort of like a bit of a game within the game. Like I've always said that about the battle board, but in this case with the combat alone, there's this back and forth on how you're gonna manipulate some of the conditions that are happening at that moment in the battle. And you and your opponent go back and forth on that. And, and there's a bit of strategy in there that I actually kind of like. And so, um, you know, really, terrain and the, and the scenario itself. I did like that. It, it's changed a bit. Before there was just random sort of placement of terrain on the board based on rolling on a table. Now you have a lot more freedom as to where you can place it. But then there's some little antics that you can do where like you can actually move a piece of terrain that your opponent put down in this scenario by a number of uh, inches before you finish. And or a distance. I think it's M, you know, because they use standard measurement in Saga. And I like that. There was a bit of the the same results sort of happen like you know you still kind of get in between two in the old game you kind of your opponent determined how much terrain they wanted you determine how much terrain you wanted and you fell somewhere in between this really does the same thing through a different mechanism when you follow the scenario it's just that um the method of doing it is a little bit different and i i, I did like it i thought it was actually good so I, I thought it mostly achieved the same effect but allowed you to make a little little adjustments that you couldn't before you know, overall, I've heard people talk a little bit about whether they felt it was the same game or not. I actually feel it's mostly the same game um, than it was before. And I think a big part of that is because the battle board is key for Saga. It's one of the defining features of the game for me. And it's still a game, if not even more so, that it doesn't feel like small scale skirmish. For those of you that, that like games where you use like 10 models and they're all individual models, I mean, Saga is not like that at all in my mind. In my mind, um, Saga gives some 
big game feel with lesser models in the sense that you're primarily using units and it's all about the unit of a group that a miniature is within and less about the individual man within it, like musk and tomahawks. And I kind of talked about that in my initial video and, and impressions of Saga. And I still feel it's the same. And in some ways it's more so because now everyone can fight. Like there's even, there was always a stage where you could eliminate certain miniatures being able to fight in a combat based on rules. And that gets down to the man, even though I said it's more about the unit, there were times in the old rules that it was still about the man in certain situations. Now it's, you know, even more so about the unit, it's even moving more towards that direction because you're moving a, a central model and then placing your models around it um, within a distance. And so creating that, that unit cohesion is important in the second, the 2.0 edition. Um, and then moving into combat, they fight as a unit and there's, n there's not eliminating certain attackers. So I, I feel that that principle is even more so now than it was before, but it was a defining feature before as well. And so I feel it's still very much the same game, but they've made some streamlined it. They've made the, the rule book is definitely a little easier to understand. And they've, they've taken the, um, the battle board abilities in the combat round. And in some ways it's through simplicity, they've simplified it and, and made it better and more strategic through simplifying it. There are some outcomes to the way they've made the changes that actually I think it, have, have improved it. Before I think it had a structure and allowed you to do some of the strategic things that you can do now, but I think they've kicked it up a notch by providing more freedom in how some things are applied. And so I actually quite like that. Um, Overall, like I said, the game took a little longer. I don't know that I can talk about how fast of a game it is yet because it, it took a little longer. But um, my particular game was really close. Um, it ended up being a draw. I really felt my, my opponent kind of won in the sense that he did a little bit more damage than I did, but it wasn't enough in this scenario to, for it to be considered not a draw. And so we ended up in a draw. Um, still a bloody game, like Saga, like there's a lot of casualties pretty quick, like in Saga can happen. Um, and that still, that feeling was still there. Um, so overall, I'm actually really quite happy with um, the second edition. I really don't have um, any concerns overall. Um, I am looking forward to when the battle book comes out. I definitely will be buying it. Um, I really liked the one scenario we played. There's some opportunity for some different types of games within the same scenario. But I do think that that will only get you so far. I think the battle book will be really nice to have. And then rules for buildings, because they've taken those out. And just having all of that wrapped up in the battle book that can be used for all the different um, worlds and things. So, so yeah, you know, um, looking forward to painting my Scots up for it. And I'm pretty jazzed up for Saga now. Like, yeah, I don't, just looking here, there's a lot more in this book that I'm not commenting on, but those are sort of the things that jump out at me. Um, yeah, so that would be sort of my take on Saga 2.0. Very good, very worth it. Um, has not disappointed. So, so I had my first game of Mordheim on Saturday. Now, like Saga, I mean, I think we got some of the rules wrong. My opponent and I both had read through the rules, and overall, I find the combat um, pretty simple with Mordheim. I mean, it's simple but nice. But, you know, we did some things incorrect with setting up our war bands and um, the way we set up henchmen. And in some ways, we did things a little bit more stricter to the rules than in our interpretation than what we're allowed. Like, we didn't realize that you could actually have henchmen each in their own war band. So, like, if you had henchmen, you could have, like, you could have six henchmen and have six henchmen groups. For those of you that are familiar with Mordheim, you might be know what I'm talking about. But we just figured that each type of henchman had to be within its own group. And we had to make kind of, as you saw in my last video, I talked about how I was having one guy with a saber or a sword and just calling it an ax in order for them to be in the henchman group. Apparently you can split them up and have multiple groups. And so we did that kind of wrong. And, and then also more importantly, um, we ignored the all alone rule. Like we didn't remember it during the game. And there were a lot of situations where somebody was all alone and we didn't apply that psychology. And so we are, we really had a lot of fun. I think I can speak for my opponent as well. Like both of us were really jazzed up about it. Like after the game, we were like, this is just so much fun. 
and we love the after game effect with the scenario um, and how you just figure out injuries and, and gold and weird stone and all that stuff um, experience. And we just really loved it. The game itself was a lot of fun. We really thoroughly enjoyed it just because we, we forgot a couple of things and we were just, it was like a test game. We are going to start over again. We're not going to actually continue our campaign after the first game and we're going to rejig our, our war bands and basically start again and really look forward to, to playing again. After reading the rules, I was so, I, I talked about it in the Musty Board Gamers uh, last week, but I was so um, impressed with the rule system and just the book itself and, and the rules. I was looking at it on the online version is that I sent out a text to a local um, wargaming trading group and I just asked if anybody had the, the rules. And within an hour, I scored a mint condition copy. Like you'd see it's a little like um, wrinkled right there on um, just a little bit of shelf wear on there. But overall, it's like brand new Oh, you guys probably can't see that very well, but it's like a brand new condition of the book. And I got a really good deal on it. And I just thought I, I really liked the rules. I kind of figured I was going to get into this and I just wanted a copy of the book. I always like to have the book in most cases, even though I do have some systems where I have just PDFs online and stuff. And so I got the book itself. Um, really, really excited about it. I enjoyed the combat. I was surprised as to just when you start out the game, I was a little surprised as just how vulnerable everyone is. Like when you first start, like even like your your captain and your um, like my Centagor, um, they can really get taken out very easily, even by low level characters in the very beginning when they're they're not really high in experience and they don't have a lot of protection. But it strikes me as one of those games where they're even if you get put out of action, like you can certainly come back after the game and you know you can heal from an injury or not really get injured or fully recover but then you can die you know of course as well but because of that i think that it's one of these things where it's really easy to get put out of action within a game and so you have to be really careful and so there's a challenge in that i like that um the system overall i mean the book is just has so much to it i mean like it has some really great scenarios it's got the whole campaign component um, and, and really nice combat um, opportunities with critical hits and um, avoid, you know, not wanting to get critical hits. And now you can avoid that as well as, um, you know, the injury table and being able to come back from injuries if you're set up right with somebody else there to prevent your opponent from hitting you. There's a lot of cool, you know, strategy within, within the, the mechanics of it as well. And so the universe in the background, I think I don't really have to speak a whole t a lot to. I mean, if you like old Hammer stuff, if you like the old world, even from fantasy and, and Warhammer, then you've got it like with Mordheim. And so I'm really, really in enjoying that component, the modeling component. And so, yeah, I think it's going to be one that it's going to be part of the channel for a bit. Um, I can't speak to whether it'll ultimately become a core game, but there's, it has a really good chance. And so I've decided that for the next bit, I am still planning on doing my saga, like for painting, like for war bands and such, but I am going to be starting some old, uh, I'm going to be doing some Warhammer fantasy buildings. Um, I decided because I wanted to do some old Warhammer fantasy as well, I'm not going to do them all as Mordheim ruins, but I'm going to kind of mix it up because you can do a Mordheim table with regular buildings. They don't all have to have destroyed roofs and things, but I'm going to, make some buildings that are just sort of intact and then i'm going to make some that are a bit destroyed and i figure i can use them for both like warhammer fantasy as well as um Mordheim games and so i'm going to be doing some structures i've got some ideas i've been researching it so i'll be doing some terrain for Mordheim in the near future and so that's will be incorporated on the channel and as well I am looking at collecting some different war bands just because um, I think it'll be a lot of fun just to actually collect and have a couple of different war bands for more time. I do have a Witch Hunters to paint up, but I'm interested in doing maybe a um, Sisters of Sigmar and then maybe one of the various mercenary, human mercenary units that um, are in available in the game. I do have some, a fair bit of old hammer, orcs and goblins kind of stuff that I can put together as well. 
and I'm interested in doing dwarves as well. And so, um, yeah, so I'm probably over the next year or two going to be doing those kinds of projects, um, just paced out, you know, like right now I'm enjoying using the Beastmen and I have a lot to explore using that warband and switching up different types of lists and just enjoying that. But then I'm likely going to want to do some painting projects as well. Um, yeah, so I do um, want to just give, before I go, because this is a bit of a quick heresy hump day today, um, I do have um, that miniature that I said I'm going to do the painting tutorial on for the, the Ottawa native. Since doing the 500 video when I talked about that, I have done some testing with multiple cameras just to give a bit of a technology update. I have um, the capability of doing it, but for those of you who may or may not know this, but Windows 10 does have some limitations on in its camera, normal camera software functions and its ability to use multiple cameras, some limitations with that respect. And so for me to, to use multiple cameras without investing in some software specifically to do that, I'm using two different camera softwares simultaneously uh, with audio and then I'm going to be incorporating it into my software to edit videos and I have multi-cam functionality at that point where I can combine both streams of camera footage and audio and sync them. Some of it's kind of really clunky, like I have some software that I'm using that you almost have to do things in a certain order to get it to record correctly and save correctly. Um, but I did some testing and I was actually able to put together some video using multiple cameras and audio and it worked. And so I think, um, I've showed this once before, I have a, my camera itself is actually really great. I have a really awesome camera web webcam to do close-up shots and it even has like a, an autofocus and can focus really nicely. And that part is quite excellent. It's mostly the software that is the, sometimes the issue and getting things to work together. And so um, that'll be coming up in the near future. I'm going to do that. I, I do think I have the foundation for being able to put together a video like that. We'll see how it goes. My biggest fear, uh, just being really transparent <laughs> in my production capabilities, but my biggest fear is doing like painting that miniature and then having something going wrong in the middle because then basically there's no video, right? I mean, you know, at that point, um, you painted the one that you said you were going to paint and you've messed it up in the middle and like there's really no going back, like unless you just are really diehard and you're just going to strip the miniature and start again and record. And so that, that's where I'm really trying to put this work in ahead of time so I can actually do this um, and have it come out well. Um, one thing I could just do is, and it would be easier, is to just do it like many do and just paint it um, while just on one camera using that and then just not showing myself. But for production purposes, I kind of wanted a video where I was actually like in the shot in the corner and then painting and then just you guys seeing the miniature. And so that's what I was attempting to do. I may have to reconsider that. I don't know. Um, I'm not sure how much it makes a difference in the end. So, well, I apologize that this Heresy Hump Day is not a typical one, um, but I just wanted to give a bit of an update today on things that I've been doing, um, both painting wise, things finishing, things I'm going to towards um, and painting projects and just thoughts on some of the gaming that I've been doing recently. So I hope um, for those of you that are celebrating a holiday this weekend, I hope you guys are having a great weekend with friends and family, and I will see you guys next week. Take care.